Stop wasting money on your kitchen countertops. In this video, we're gonna show you how we made these countertops for about $250. We're also gonna show you how we saved thousands assembling our own prefabricated cabinets, how we installed the sink on site, how we installed everything like a pro. Don't remodel anything before you watch this video. Coming up, you're gonna learn all the tips and tricks of how to become a pro. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Guys, I am back with world famous Ken. This guy does not play when it comes to DIY projects. I, I can't seem to stop. I'm, I'm addicted, Mike. <laughs> you bought these cabinets. Uh, they're prefabricated cabinets. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, I think that's an excellent choice for a lot of projects. You know, cabinets aren't cheap. You're going to save thousands on this project. So stick around. We're going to do some cabinets, and then we're going to teach you how to do stone coat on top of those cabinets yeah. for new construction. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be beautiful. Sink base, 12 inch. 30 inch base, 12 inch base, fridge. Okay, and then the island's gonna have a 12 inch overhang? Yes, or whatever we decide overhang. Right, exactly. So that's what it's gonna look like. Check that out. They got a rendering here for them. Cool. Guys, pro tip when you're assembling these, to keep track of everything, don't take all the doors off. Don't take all the drawers out. Only what you need to at that time. So we'll pop this, we'll pop these, and we'll pop this, and then I could screw these together perfectly, and then I'll put those right back on and go to the next one. Okay. So you don't, because if you did this all at once, you're gonna go, where's that go, where's yeah. it? Or yeah. you just have to number everything. So this is the way I do it. Okay. By pre-assembling your prefabricated cabinets before you install, will create a more professional look and appear like custom cabinets. We're first pre-drilling with a small drill bit, and then we're using coarse thread, self-tapping square drive screws. This is a professional application because those screws will hold that face frame super strong. We're gonna do the same thing with the back of the cabinet. First, we cut a spacer, then we're going to install that spacer to keep this cabinet square. The spacer allows us to screw through the back of the cabinet through the spacer and makes everything very strong in the back as well so that when we transport and install this cabinet is custom made. After we're done assembling the cabinets we're going to attach the doors and drawers right back on so we don't misplace anything and have to guess at where it went. Then we're going to add some plywood to the back of this island. The back of these cabinets are 1 8 inch veneer so we want to beef it up because this is going to act as an island and be finished on all three sides. After we attach that 3 8 inch plywood, we're going to cut our veneer. Our veneer is going to finish this off like a pro. What we're going to do is use our 2P10 glue, which is super glue, and our accelerator. First dry fit everything. Make sure you know exactly how it's going to fit. We're going to add our glue on. We'll spray the other part of the substrate with our accelerator and we'll rub that for about 15 seconds and it'll be solid as a rock. All right, we're going to call and find out what that would cost, how much money we're saving by putting all this together and installing it ourselves. First, what would it be worth to pay somebody to do this, you think? And then we'll see if we, if we should have just hired them to do it. I, I think they got to charge 700, 600 bucks. I say maybe, maybe f between 700 and 1,000. Oh, okay. Let's see what they say. You must have uh, at and Thanks for holding. This is Rachel. Hey, Rachel. I have a question for you. If I was, okay. if I was going to have one of your installers install the, my cabinets, what would the price be for that? Um, let me see. Probably looking at uh, around a thousand dollars. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a good You're day. You're welcome. Thank you. You okay. too. Bye. All right. Bye bye. You know pricing better than I do. We were right in the ballpark, man. <laughs> we, we were right in the ballpark. Uh, three, you're probably on site. You're probably six hours total. Mm -hmm. Round that up to an eight-hour day. $1,000 for eight-hour day ain't bad pay. Not bad. I'd say it's worth it doing it yourself. Yeah. Watching this video saves you $1,000. $1, Guys, next video, you're going to see us in Hawaii from the money that Ken saved. That's right. He may not pay me, but he takes me to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't lift my saw blade up because I, I don't want to pick it and chip it. Oh. Okay. Another trick.
Let's put these with this up here. Okay. Let's figure out what other cabinets are exposed, just the uppers, right? So we got this exposure and that exposure. Cool. Let's make your tops. All right. I got MDF. Three sheets, three quarter. I got four sheets. Oh, you're the man. What a guy. What hey, a guy. I can't leave you hanging. Yeah. This stuff Whoa, is hold on. <laughs> I'm going to fall. Okay. So let's get our, let's go to our dimensions of your island and then we'll figure out what kind of overhang. You want to throw it to me? Mm. This should be, well. Should be 60 inches. Yeah, it is. It Excellent. is. Five foot nice by two foot deep, right? 24 and three quarters, because okay. 24 box, three quarter face frame. The reason you want inch and a half is because you got a three quarter inch drawer. Yes. You got a little button there that protrudes another quarter. So you're an inch, right? Yeah. And you want your countertop to overhang those drawers at least a half an inch, okay? Just for the aesthetics and the yeah. drip edge and all that. And then if you want to do a radius, we'll talk about how that looks. So okay. we'll account for 12 back there and inch and a half around the box. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Let's go. Half of 63 would be 31 and a half. 31 and a half. Okay. Are you just getting the center center point? Yeah, getting the center point so that we could lay out our arc. Don't you do one of the C's on here? Yeah, you got it. Okay, there we go. A great on-site table is two sawhorses. Put your two by fours across it. Just lay a couple two by fours so your plywood doesn't belly down. Throw your plywood on it, foam, and now you're in business. Excellent. So, the reason I'm not using our guide is this is going to be a rock face edge. It's total forgiveness in it. So let's just measure from here and go three inches. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I do this. Oh. I'm going to go right here. Put, push it all the way to that piece. Is that right? Yep. Do you like that arch? Yeah, I think I do like it. If there's two people sitting here, they can kind of look at each other. Yeah. Oh, I like they, that. That's like true. Each other, you know? Yeah. And if they're going to VRBO a suite, they probably like each other. That, we hope so. Yeah, that was simple. That, I would have fought with that for a long time. Okay, the key here is two passes. So you're just going to go about halfway through each time. Okay. And using a fine tooth blade helps. There you go. And I'll get some clamps. Okay. So you do plywood reinforcement? If I wasn't doubling it up. Okay. But since I'm doubling it up, this overhang is not going to flex. We're gonna use Tight Bond 2 wood glue to glue this MDF together. It really holds well, and it's gonna make this like one sheet. And also, by doubling it up, it's gonna give us plenty of reinforcement on the back side of this where it overhangs, so you won't have that flex. Okay, that's pretty well glued, I'd say. I think that's gonna hold. Cool. Okay, so I'll just go around the perimeter first and then I'll do the field. Okay, nice. Pretty slick. That's a top bearing. The router bit goes down and that bearing rides the MDF. So I'm getting this bearing protruded out and that's gonna hit that top piece. We're not gonna go all the way through on our first pass. Okay. And then I'll lower it again and do our second pass. Okay, I'll do the first one and then you do the second pass. <laughs> okay. I actually, I actually grab it, get a good hold of it, I start it and then I come down and then okay. bury in, that's kind of starting here and then it'll bring you right in. Feel that overhang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going anywhere. No. <laughs> 
All right, let's get our next sheet up here. Okay. Don't you love just having this thing here? That oh man. Slide it off. Wow, it's so nice. So this here, let's cut it a half inch on one side. Okay. Okay. Because you don't want it perfectly flush with that edge of that cabinet if you don't have to. Right. You know, it just doesn't look good. Right. And then uh, this is the, the scary thing about not templating on site with the fridge there and all that. Do you have your sink template here or your sink? I didn't bring the sink. You want me to go get it? We'll cut out the piece. We'll do our rock face and all that. And then we could pick up the sink and the paint and all that. Okay. So did you want measurements? No, we'll go measure the actual cabinet. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we're 75 and an eighth on the face frame. I'll go 75 and three eighths. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is rip it in half. Okay, I'm gonna get our clamps. Guys, the reason we're using our straight edge here is because this is gonna be like a factory cut. This is what's butting the back wall. The front will get a rock face, but we wanna keep this nice and true. So a saw guide comes in handy. Seventy-five and three-eighths. We know what this guy is, right? Yeah, that's the uh, the other side. Let's go measure that one. We'll just do both cuts at the same time. All right. Okay, we're twelve. We'll just go like fourteen inches, and we'll cut that side. Okay. Cool. That makes it easy. Okay, let's, let's make some drop edge. Okay. All right. Now we got some drop edge material. Another pro tip, whenever I'm putting a speed square on a cabinet, I use a plastic one right in the oh, center. Oh, there you go. Okay. Wow. Come here. Boom, you're 46 and a half from that side. Remember, don't 46 and a half. that. That's got to be that side, 46 and a half. All right. 46 and a half. Remember that. Let's do our rock face edge. All right. Thanks. Good enough, right? Yeah. That's a good looking island. All right, this is gonna take a number of coats, but I'll show you how I do it. And then, uh, have you ever done a rock face with me before? We have, we kind of make a mess and uh, then we clean it all up. It's like a Fred Flintstone tool. It is. If you're not yeah. awake, Bondo will wake you up. Warning, <laughs> Bondo stinks. You know it, what? I love the smell of Bondo. It makes you appreciate epoxy because our epoxy is zero VOC. And we're just trying to get a thin coat on the whole thing. And it doesn't matter if you're missing some spots. And if you can do it better with your hands, maybe that would be a, I might even try that. Let me try my hand at this. Yeah, that's gonna be way faster actually. Really? Yep, that's gonna be the way I do it from now on. Okay. Holy cow, talk about fast. Yeah, the, the, the glove gives it the texture already too. Yeah, I like it. Okay, pro 
tip. We needed to go pick up some supplies, but it doesn't mean we need to halt the progress. Do everything you can do in the shop. Make one list so you don't forget your essential sundries. Go pick them up, come back, and FTJ. Finish the job. We got your template. Yes. This is a cool sink. <laughs> I, I like it. So, looks like that's gonna sit right inside there. This is actually gonna be right on that perimeter. So that'll be a nice cutout. I like that. Let's get a measurement here. So inside we're 22 inches, and there we're 17. <clears throat> and if we had to, we could read the instructions. We could, but who reads the instructions? It's not me. <laughs> So how do you know the distance here for the face of the sink? I'm usually four to four and a half. Okay. Because you got an inch and a half. Yeah. Then you Overhead. got three quarters. Okay. So that, that usually puts you about two and a half to the edge of that face frame and then come in a little bit further okay. to give you a lip for your your lip on your sink. And then I'll take this and yeah, so now we're we're dead center. Too. Four you decided. Okay. And we'll cut this thing out. Okay. It's a heavy little island now. It's feeling solid. Yes it is. Okay, pro tip two is stay a little shy on okay. these two oh, corners okay. and then we'll put something under there to support. So what's your thoughts on this one? Just use the jigsaw? Um, we can sand it or use the jigsaw. Okay. Nice. I learned something. Yeah, buddy. Nice. I'm gonna get my, uh, I got some heavier grit and we'll just bust it right out. I like the way this edge starts coming out. I do too. Isn't that easy? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna switch to uh, 220 and get that a little smoother. 60 grit on MDF goes fast. Now I'll get my router and we'll router this top and bottom of that thing. Pretty crazy how fast you can really make these, huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, let's make your uh, window sill. Okay. Six and five eighths by 48. Six and five eighths by 48. Nice. I brought my light in too. So basically, you mimic that uh, the bulldoze, and more or less, yeah. Okay, I think I got those edges. We're ready to paint. We're ready. I'm gonna bring that other thing back here. Are you surprised we got this far, Ken? Yeah, I didn't think we'd be. Uh, you say we're going to pour today? Yeah, hopefully.
This is gonna be really excited to do my kitchen, Mike. Oh, to my, do your, my yeah? Real, my real kitchen. Two thin coats is better than one thick coat. Pro tip, when you're doing your cabinet hardware, if you wanna get a perfect fit on your drawers, make a template. You know that when I stick this up here, I can only screw in one spot. This keeps you from ruining a perfectly good cabinet with cattywampus hardware. <laughs> Don't do that. That hardware is gonna look slick. All right, I'm all blacked up. You can buy jigs at Home Depot and they got a thousand holes on them and so you're just gonna follow the wrong hole. Yeah. So it's easy to make it. Measure here and line that right up and then drill it. There we go. All right, now it's time to do your doors. Okay. We'll make a new template. Why two coats, Mike? Especially on raw edges on MDF, it soaks it in like crazy, so you really only need it on the edges, but it doesn't hurt doing the whole thing. And if you seal that wood really well, okay. same reason you gesso a painting, a canvas, to just get it sealed up. Hey, on your handles? Yes. I would probably recommend starting them about right there. Okay. Are you cool with that? Yeah. See my door template? Uh-huh. Beautiful. So I just make it the same as your, your style, mm -hmm. and then it's universal, whichever, nice. whichever size that opens. Now oh, that's the fun part. Yeah. Whenever we're gonna mix our 91% isopropyl alcohol with our metallic powders, I like to use a funnel and a spray bottle. I'm gonna mix about half a bag of metallic to eight ounces of alcohol. I'll test the spray. We wanna make sure it's nice and concentrated so those effects show up. If you have too much alcohol, it will be slightly diluted and less of a contrast to your project. If you've used too much metallic, it could clog your spray bottle. If that's the case, pull the nozzle out, put it in raw alcohol, spray some alcohol through it, and you're good as new. I love using this as an effect. Let's get started. We'll mix up our alcohol and do this recipe. Good to go. Ready? Go this way. All right, we got this painted. We are ready to do the under effects. Okay. We're gonna use our rainforest green, our gold, and that will put some under effects. If you look, you really liked our Uba Tuba recipe. I do. Guys, have you seen our Uba Tuba recipe where we show step by step how we made this sample? We're gonna mimic this in this project. The color is simple, but it looks complex, doesn't it? It does. Looks like it took a serious faux artist to make that. You know, they have Brazilian granite that looks very similar to this. The key here is getting your droplets to come out how you like them. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll spray a little bit of clear and this lubricates the board so that when it hits, it doesn't just hit at an angle and spatter at like little, little teardrops. It'll hit that clear and still give you circles. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. First thing I'll do is just do a, a, a light sand on this just to get rid of any high points. And then uh, you want to grab those rags. We'll just wipe that dust and then we'll uh, spritz this thing. And uh, I'm gonna do this, and then you're gonna help me on the next piece, okay. but you'll, uh, you'll be an expert by the time we're done. Okay, here we go. That's all I'm doing there. So doing it random is really the key, isn't it? It is. You don't wanna create a pattern, and you see how I'm barely pulling that trigger? Yeah. That the, the, the big rookie mistake that people make is 
pulling full trigger pulls every time. I've done that. I got chastised. You did? By you. I'm sorry. <laughs> That looks cool though, it gives you a cool underpainting, right? Yeah. And be sure to get a little on the edges too, yep. Okay, I'll, I'll lead you into this section. Okay. There you go, hit it. So if we see where we have some blank spots with one of the colors, do we hit it? or You we can, just... you can, but as you see on this piece, the only time you see underneath this is in spots like oh, that okay. and that. So you're not seeing a lot of this. But look at that already. That's that's pretty. I, I love the way it, on the edges like that, especially yeah. with that rock face. Yeah. That really looks sharp. That's fantastic. All right. Kind of rain some gold down from high, just like where it's. Oh, you can get high. Oh, not on my other samples, Ken. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wondered where they were going. Okay, we'll let those dry. Okay. All right, we got to get some epoxy. I wonder where we can get the epoxy. I didn't think of that. I got some epoxy. Hey, that is fast. Guys, go to StoneCoatCountertops.com to see all the products used in this video. We're gonna turn MDF into Ubatuba Brazilian Granite. Let's do it. We mixed up our clear Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy for two minutes using a drill. We slowed that drill down. We rubbed the bottom and the sides of the bucket. Now we have our clear epoxy. Our epoxy is durable. There's zero VOC, so we don't have a noxious smell. It's user friendly. There's a long open working time, so you don't need to be in a rush on your project. So we're gonna trowel this out with our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. We'll chop those trowel marks out using a chop brush. This also helps mix that epoxy again so you don't have any sticky spots. We'll fog the entire surface with black spray paint and we break that spray paint open to reveal the underpainting with the metallics mixed with alcohol. Let's go! chopping the surface, torch the bubbles out, and then you're ready to apply the effects. See, that's too much. I like that. Okay. The key with this process is not to overdo the metallics. Spray the spray paint, hit it with the metallics, and wait a few minutes before you judge it. If you overdo it, you'll apply too much alcohol to the surface. It'll look cool for a little bit, and then it'll kind of flow back to each other, reducing the enhanced effects. So, try this on a sample board before you go for it on your whole kitchen, but we, we got some experience. Mike, you had it beautiful, now you made it all black. I know. Here we go, watch this. See, I'm not putting a lot of metallic yeah. on there. I do about half of it with the green, and then I'll come back with half of it with the gold. That's beautiful. Isn't that, isn't oh, that amazing? Yeah. That is fantastic. It's, <laughs> it's gonna keep moving like that, isn't it? Now look at that compared to just the undertone. Oh, yeah. the, the depth is amazing. So I just did that one section. If you leave that black paint, it'll start to sink, and it doesn't do it as much. So oh. I do it right away, and I'll just do it right here in sections. Isn't that something? So at this point, is the paint down inside that epoxy? No, it's not. It's, 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 it's like just pushed. Up. Wow, this would be a showpiece. You gonna finish that one? You, you want me to, or do you want to finish it? I'll give it a try. All right, I like it. Do it. All right. A little closer. Good. And just try to hit the gold in the dark spots. Oh, okay. Let's 
probably good. That is cool. I got a big blob of gold there, but. That's all right. That okay. might be your favorite spot. It probably will be. Let me see that black paint. I'm going to actually fog a little bit on that edge. Mike, why is that so white this time? We got a little bit of air in it from mixing it because we didn't mix as big of a batch. Okay. And so that's real common. Great question. The air will come right out with torching, and then we're going to do our same black spray paint, spray the metallics. Then tomorrow, we're going to do a clear coat. Clear coat's going to do two things. It's going to give us a little higher build. It's going to just stay clear, and it's going to hide any of our additives. This gives you full durability, and it gives you that depth that you're looking for. Woo! <laughs> That's the first time I've used that saw, and that is a sweet saw. It's got some, it's got some torque. So we right. don't need any screw strips on this one, but the other two, the uh, long run and then the short yep. one, we will. I'm gonna give you a pro tip, okay? When you, when you cut them short, you jam them to the back anyways, because you're gonna set it vertical, drop it, and slide it, and you don't have something to catch. Excellent, got it, ready? You good? Yep. Perfect. Now that's not quite what I thought about when we were doing the countertops. No, that's... I mean, it's pretty, but... It's uh, different. We'll just use it as a work surface. That's an ultimate work surface. <laughs> Pro tip, when you pour your tops, if you want to scrape the drips after that epoxy starts to gel, typically between three and four hours, you can just scrape those off with a credit card, a stir stick, uh, our trowel, anything like that will get those off as it starts to gel. I let it harden up and I'm just gonna sand it with a 50 grit metal sanding disc. It's easy to do, it's fast and it's effective. It's just dusty. So if you're gonna do it on site, scrape those about three to four hours later. So we poured these tops three days ago was our final coat. Um, we've had the heat on so they've cured pretty well. The heat resistance isn't gonna kick in for 30 days from your last pour. So keep that in mind when you're using your kitchen and don't do that durability test until after that's fully cured. Look Cheers. at that. Now you see the gap I was talking about? Don't, don't oh, you yeah. like it up a little oh, bit more? Absolutely. Tight like that, it, it looks funny when you pull drawers out and you got no room there. Yeah. Guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm just using my screws to screw underneath into that screw strip that we put on, and then it's going into the countertop. This holds everything down and makes it super secure. It makes your install fast. Oh no, it that, fits. That fits perfect. I'll measure from that cabinet to here. Okay. And uh, then it'll tell me where to put in my brackets. Okay guys, I'm gonna make some brackets to hold the sink in place. I just grabbed some hardwood. I'm gonna use my pocket jig. This will tie into the front and the back of the cabinet. I don't just glue it in with silicone. That's gonna hold for a while, but over time that silicone's gonna wanna become loose. So use a bracket, it'll hold that silicone gasket in place. You won't have leaks, you'll have a professional install and you'll sleep well at night. And it's important note, I'm using pocket screws that have a self-tapping bit and it's a fine thread so don't split your wood here oh, if you use good. those coarse thread phillips it's going to split okay um typically no. well, yeah we probably will have to notch that one yep we will and that's just fine <clears throat> see i wouldn't have thought to do it this way this is this is a slick way to do this you like i would that? have thought to go up from the bottom i would have fought the whole thing mm -hmm. Yeah, this is saving us a lot of heartache. It's, this is nice. So we're gonna trim that out with a bottom bearing router. It creates a lot of dust, but a perfect cut. You gotta give to get, right? Yeah, we got masks. That's the hard part of the install that we just did. Now those brackets are super strong from being tied to the cabinet this way and to those screw strips. And now we don't need anything here. Oh, okay. See what I mean? Yeah, no, because we have it already right there. Right. Okay, you want soap dispenser. When I just do an offset soap, I usually like to go dominant hand for most people's right hand. Mm -hmm. And I go eight inches because I don't want it just hugging here. It looks funny. Yeah. So I'll usually go eight inches to the right. You cool with that? Absolutely. 
Pro tip, 99% of faucets I've installed, soap dispensers, uh, buttons for garbage disposals, Insta-hots, uh, reverse osmosis, one and three eighths hole works really good. I typically will come an inch and a half from the front of my sink to where my hole starts. So my hole is going to be right there. Okay. Okay. I'm drilling the hole out now for a couple of reasons. On site, you're gonna kick up a lot of dust. If you already have this caulked out, now you gotta protect that from getting dust on it. Also, I'm gonna red guard underneath this sink to prevent any water intrusion. So because this is already cut out, I get to red guard that at the same time. It's killing multiple projects or two birds, birds with one stone. Yeah. There it is. Nice. You got plenty of room to the back, but if we didn't cut that out, you'd have half a screw strip there. Boom. There we go. And this is the only one we need to red guard, right? Yeah, yeah. Here. You got gloves? I got you. Oh, oh darn, I was trying to think of everything. <laughs> so what I do is I don't want to get near the edge at first, it's just going to glob. So I get most of it off. Uh, yeah. And then we'll come in when we got some residual left on that roller, and I just go light right up to it. Mm -hmm. Now this stuff dries pretty fast, doesn't it? It does. Pro tip, I'm using a 23 gauge pen gun. I'm using 5 8 inch micro pens. That's so that I don't blow through any of my substrate. I get a nice tight fit, and I don't have a lot to putty to hide any nail holes. All right, Mike, this is what separates the men from the boys right No here. way. Yeah. No way. What? I did it! Yay! Yay! You're the wrong business, man! You know what my kids found out years ago? Michael Jordan and I are the same height. But they couldn't figure out why I didn't make the money that Michael Jordan makes. He looks better. All right, let's recap. Now we have nice, beefy brackets that are going to hold the sink forever. This is a great way to pre-install your sinks. It's super strong and it makes install a breeze. All right, let's load these up. this I'm gonna work my bead to the edge of the sink the outside edge so that when we ooze it down it doesn't blow out all the way to the sink. Does that make sense? Perfect. Remember when I put those screw strips in now I'm just screwing through those into the bottom of this red guarded top. This is an excellent way to install and it's fast. Guys, pro tip, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get in here and screw that. So I'm just gonna put some silicone on that and glue it down. It'll be really solid in one day, 24 hours. Let's do your window sill. Okay.
All right. Now we'll go, you want a jigsaw? Yeah. Or? Yeah, Can, we'll go jigsaw this outside. Let's go see if it fits. Oh, nice, Mike. Wow. There you go. Oh, that's heavy because we this, doubled it up. This is a heavy island. This is like a piece of rock. <laughs> you couldn't carry a rock like that. All right, that. set it down and then I'll set that down. Should have about an inch and a half overhang all the way around. Boy, I like that we did that arch. I do too. That really softens up the uh, look. That's fun, man. Tell me about the wagon wheel. What, what's up with the wagon wheel? So our property, uh, the Applegate Trail actually went right through our property. Uh -huh. So we uh, we've got the wagon wheel up there. We're going to get a nice big map of the Oregon Trail. So the Applegate Trail is a southern route um, that uh, Jesse Applegate actually found because he lost his, his kids in the Columbia. When they came, when they came down, they, there was a float they had to do. He lost his kids. He was determined to find another route. So he found another southern route for settlers coming into Oregon. And that Applegate Trail went right through our property. We teach you tips and tricks of how to assemble cabinetry, how to install, how to build the counters from scratch, how to do the rock face edge, how to do green and gold granite or make epoxy resemble natural stone. Hey, until next time from, oh wait, Mitch, you gotta say something to him, man. How about that Uba Tuba though, guys? Check out it, we have step-by-step -step recipe, words, directions on the website, stonecoatcountertops.com, project recipes. Uba Tuba, check it out.